it's time to clean our respirators. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. Today, it's time to clean our respirator. Yes, we must clean our respirator from time to time and I'm going to show you how I clean mine. Before we jump into the cleaning, I want to talk about this respirator a little bit. This is the 6500 series from 3M. This is a mask that fits over your nose and your mouth and around your chin. There's replaceable cartridges that this uses. Now these are the particulate or dust filters. This is the 2091s. These are not designed for fumes or for chemicals. They're designed for the dust coming from wood turnings. There are different filters that you can put on for different purposes such as chemicals and, and things of that nature. When we're cleaning this, we don't want to blow air through these or try to blow the dust out of them. If these start getting dirty, they really need to be replaced. If you blow air through them, you compromise the material inside there and they don't filter as well. Now, as far as this fitting over your face, what you really want is you want a good mask that's gonna fit over your nose and mouth and it's not gonna allow you to taste or smell the wood. I know that sounds weird, but most wood has a, an odor of one sort or another. Some are very potent, like camphor is very strong. Well, even though camphor is very strong, your respirator should be blocking that smell. If you're smelling the odor from the wood, you're most likely breathing dust as well. Now, there's a lot of people also that like to mention that I have facial hair and that I don't make a perfect seal on this mask. And I may not be making a perfect seal, but the way this mask is designed, it does constrict the air coming in from below. I do not taste or smell any of the, of the wood that I'm turning. So it may not be perfect, but if you have facial hair, I have pretty short facial hair. If you have long, if you have a long beard, it may be a little bit different. It may be a little bit trickier to get a good seal. You might want to play around with that. What I don't recommend is I don't recommend the simple little cloth masks. There are some, the N95s can work if you have them fitted properly, so no air is getting around there. But again, if you're smelling the wood or you're tasting sawdust or wood dust, then your mask is not working properly or is not adequate for what you need. So you need to really step up to a mask like this. Now, this isn't super expensive and it will last pretty much forever if you take care of it. And that's what we're gonna get to in just a second. This mask, can be cleaned and can be maintained for years and years. So it's really well worth the investment. Why would you want to spend a little bit of money on a mask like this? Well, there's a very good reason. These small dust particles that we breathe in when we're sanding and when we're turning, especially if we're turning dry woods, are super dangerous. Those dust particles can get down inside our lungs and they are very difficult to come out and they will build up over time. And you won't notice it until it's too late. Once those have accumulated in your lungs, you start having different breathing issues and it's just not a good thing and you really wanna avoid it. Now, I've run across many turners that have explained to me that they've had to give up their turning and sell their lathe because they were told by their doctor they cannot be around wood dust anymore because of their lungs being compromised. So. Do yourself a huge favor and get in the practice of wearing a respirator if you aren't already. It will save you in the long run and you'll be able to enjoy wood turning much longer by wearing one of these. All right, we're gonna get into cleaning this. I'm gonna start by taking this all apart and let's take a look at how that works. We'll start by taking the particulate filters off. You just unscrew those. They have a little fitting that seats down into those connecting portions and then locks in. And then you're gonna pop off the face frame and the head strap. I'm gonna turn the mask inside out a little bit so you can see these inside intake flaps or valves. They have a little T-shaped mount on them. What you wanna do is you wanna delicately pull the flap around the T part and then slide it down that post. You really do not want to damage these flaps. If you damage the flaps, you really need to replace the entire mask. I've seen these flaps listed and for sale in a couple places, but I, it's they're not available that often and they charge a ridiculous amount of money for them. It's almost cheaper just to buy a new mask. 
So now we're going to take the exhalation valve off. Just gently pull those posts out and the valve will come out. So you'll have a, these pieces. You have the mask, the exhalation flap. You'll have two inhalation flaps. And then you have the face frame and the straps and the filters. So you want to get those all self separated first. And then you're just going to take some soapy water. And I use dish soap, just regular dish soap. And with just your fingers, delicately rub those valves and make sure those get cleaned really well. And then dip those into clean water. You're going to want to make sure you clean these really well, but you also want to be careful not to rip them or wrinkle them in any way because they need to seat flat right on top of the openings on the mask. So just take your time and clean them off. I'm using a toothbrush here to really get some of the grime off of this exhalation flap. And this is a great way to, to get in there and get into all those crevices is to use the toothbrush. Now, if you look at the mask itself, it's got all kinds of grime on there that needs to be scrubbed away. So the toothbrush works out really well here. So I soak it a bit and then just scrub away into each one of those openings. The mask is relatively simple. Now the 6500 series that 3M makes of these, there's a variety of different designs in that. They're all very similar. They're going to basically have the same exhalation valve in the center and two inhalation valves on the side. So yours might be just a little bit different than this. That's no big deal. They, for some reason, those companies really like changing the designs of things over and over again. I can never understand that. Now you can turn the mask or the rubber part of this inside out to access the inside a little bit better. Just want to be careful and go slow with it. You obviously don't want to rip the rubber frame of this, but that's going to give you better access to the inside and you can scrub all that material out inside as well. I'm using the soapy water to help clean and loosen up any debris that's in there and then the, using the toothbrush to really take it off and clean up all of the surface area inside this mask. As we're using this mask, we're exhaling and we're breathing out hot air. Well, at least I make a lot of hot air, I've been told. <laughs> but the hot air and the moisture in our breath builds up inside here, so it can get a little bit gunky. The other benefit of cleaning this is hygienics. It's good to have a clean mask. You don't want to be using a filthy mask for a long period of time, obviously. So once that's all cleaned off, and let that soak. Now I'm also going to do the frame that has the straps on it. Now the straps are made with elastic cord and I really don't want to get those soaking wet. So I'm just going to carefully hold this above the water, the soapy water that is, and I'm just going to scrub away all the different surfaces on it, trying to avoid the straps on this as much as I can. They'll get a little bit wet and that'll be okay, but I don't want to soak them completely. Now this outside portion has a, a simple two connecting points. There is a edge at the very top that has a connecting point that it locks in. And then there's a snap at the bottom that snaps off. The inside of that exhalation port is filthy with sawdust and wood debris. If you think about it, you're breathing out all that hot air and humidity is collecting at that location and so any dust that's blowing around in front of you is sticking to that and it just makes a mess. That's why we really want to clean this well. You just get in there and take your time and scrub all those areas. And again this doesn't have to be anything fancy, just regular dish soap works fine. And just work around all the edges and clean those out. Okay, so once that's clean, I'm going to rinse it as well over in the clean water. I'm going to make sure everything's rinsed thoroughly. 
All right, after everything's rinsed, we're going to dry it off. And I'm going to start with the diaphragms. I'm going to use a clean, dry towel, and I'm going to just pat those dry. I'm going to be careful not to crumple them up or rip them because, they again, they need to stay really flat. So just kind of pat those dry and just lay them, lay them down. We'll get to those in just a second. Now, the mask that I'm using, I'll put a link in the description below so that you guys can check that out. And I'll have a link to the particulate filters as well. So you can check those out. Now, I have seen links in the past or I've seen places where you can buy those inserts, the valves or the diaphragms. But I'm not finding that right now. And when I did find it last time, they were really expensive. It was something silly like $20 or $30 they wanted for those two inhalation valves. Two little dinky pieces of rubber. So it's something you really want to take care of. You don't want to damage those. You want to put them on and take them off really delicately. And you may be tempted, instead of going through this whole process of taking everything apart, you might be tempted just to wipe out the inside of your mask. You could possibly do that between cleanings if you really need to, but just be careful when you're wiping the interior of the mask that you're not snagging those inhalation diaphragms and ripping them or tearing them because if they're torn and you're getting air in there when you shouldn't be, then the mask is pretty much useless. So you wanna make sure that those diaphragms stay intact. So we're going to wipe this out and make sure it's all very good and dry. And then I'm going to reinstall the in inhalation diaphragms in the inside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gently slide down the long post and then work this inner circle around the T portion of that post. And I'll do that for both diaphragms down the post and then around the T and then just Line up the two posts that go into the exhalation diaphragm and work that down in so it seats nice and flat against the center of the mask. And then we're going to snap the mask frame and strap on. So connect at the top first and then snap on the bottom. You can see it disconnects us by pulling the bottom portion. So you lock it on at the top and then click it to the bottom. So it didn't want to seat quite right there and now it's seated. So cleaning your respirator really isn't that big of a deal. It just takes a few minutes to take the time to take it apart, be delicate with those diaphragms inside so that you don't damage those. And you're going to want to test those to make sure everything's working properly before you start using this again. And let me show you how we test that. If everything's working fine, you should be able to put your palms over the two openings on the side where the filters will sit and you should not be able to pull in any air whatsoever. So when you try to inhale, you should get nothing except you should be creating a very tight vacuum all around the mask. If you're getting air in, then the exhalation valve is failing and you may need to check that, make sure it's seated properly. And if it's not seating properly, you may have to find and purchase a replacement piece for that. But let's go ahead and test this. I'll show you how we do it. It's very simple. <laughs> there was no air coming in whatsoever. It was kind of a weird feeling not to, to try to suck in air and you're not getting anything. So that's really what you want. So now what will happen is when these filters are placed in these openings, you will have filtered air. So the air is being pulled through these filters and all the dust is being stopped at that point. And that's what you want. And that's what we're looking for with this, this air filter. It's really that simple. I hope this video has showed you how easy it is to maintain a respirator like this and how long lasting this can be if you do maintain it. Also, remember that these filters can be replaced and you should keep up some backup filters on hand in case you start noticing these are getting really dirty and dusty. And I'm not going to replace these right now because these are in pretty decent shape still and I'm pulling air through them, which is another good way of testing them. If you're able to breathe in this pretty well without any issues, the filters are fine. 
over time as these filters fill up, it will become more difficult to breathe. So that's a good time to replace your filters as well. So either way, you want to have a mask on at all times when you're turning and when you're sanding or when you're working around any wood dust whatsoever because it's going to save your lungs in the long run. And this is the easy way to do it and now you know how to maintain your respirator. If you've liked this video, please click that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribing. Also, check out my website, turnawoodbowl.com. I've got everything you need to know about turning wood bowls over at turnawoodbowl.com, so check it out. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and happy turning.